What's going on guys? Welcome back to Let's Talk Nerd. And in this episode, we are talking about episode two of The Mandalorian. What is The Mandalorian, you ask? It is the Disney Plus original show about a Mandalorian set five years after the fall of the Empire in the Star Wars universe. It's super good and you should totally check it out. So in this episode, we are talking about episode two, chapter two of The Mandalorian series and what all the goodness that we see in it. So... Let's dive in. Boop-a-doop. So in episode two, we pick up right after episode one. The Mandalorian has just retrieved the 50-year-old baby, uh, Baby Yoda. Ba- Let- let's just go ahead and talk about Baby Yoda for a little bit. Baby Yoda has taken the world by storm. Everyone loves Baby Yoda. How can you not? You know, you look at those big eyes. In the little robe. He's got like the same robe as Yoda too. But he's just so cute. And I, he, there's so much mystery surrounding him. And uh, I just I just can't wait to see more of Baby Yoda. And that's what this episode did. It really focuses on the relationship between the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. Uh, it picks up right after uh, the Mandalorian has just killed the assassin droid that was part of the, uh, the bounty. Uh, they had teamed up and he betrayed him because the assassin droid was going to kill Baby Yoda. But as we see in the first episode, the Mandalorian does have a heart. He's not just a cold-hearted warrior uh, out to make a quick buck. He might be a little bit, just a little bit, but he does have a conscious, conscience, conscious, I don't know. He, so he, he takes Baby Yoda. He was given the option to take the asset alive or dead, but it was very clear that the man that he took the bounty from wanted Baby Yoda to die. And that is what I talked about in the first episode, most likely because his species is Force-sensitive and more than likely will be a Jedi. He has Baby Yoda in tow. He's, he's trekking his way across uh, the desert, the canyon planet, uh, back to his ship when he is ambushed by the same thugs that were holding uh, Baby Yoda. And uh, we get to see some cool fight scenes with uh, the Mandalorian, kicking ass as always. Uh, we get to finally see him use his blaster rifle, uh, which was pretty sick, saving uh, Baby Yoda in the process. And uh, he does get hurt again, which uh, which is a pretty big deal. It wasn't, they didn't really like focus on it too much, I guess, uh, to say, but they are showing that he is vulnerable. And I want to talk about that uh, quite a bit in this uh, this discussion video. The Mandalorian does get hurt. He's at a campfire. Uh, you know, it's nighttime now. He's probably been walking for a while. He doesn't have a blurg to ride back on. Uh, while he's repairing the damage on his arm, we see Baby Yoda take, like watching him. He gets out of his crib. He's walking over to the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian's not really paying attention at this point. We start seeing the little Yoda character using the force he's raising his arms and he sees the wound he's using he's trying to use the force to repair that wound on the mandalorian um i think he realizes that the mandalorian did save him from death from getting a blaster bolt right through his little baby head like i was talking about and uh but the mandalorian's not really paying attention at this point he's not seeing him raise his arm he's not feeling anything different uh he wasn't actually able to heal him at that point because he wasn't given the chance i don't really think um, so Mandalorian puts him back in the crib, gets back out, tries to do it again. Mandalorian's still not paying attention, still not realizing what he's doing, shuts him in, <laughs> shuts him in the crib. Like, wouldn't that be awesome? Like having kids, you just put them in the little baby thing and just, and, and then it takes care of them, whatever. That was pretty sick. Uh, so they wake up, they're still trekking back to his ship. And unfortunately he arrives back at his ship. We see a sand crawler. Who drives sand crawlers? None other than Jawas. When I saw that, so I was thinking, uh, this has to be Tatooine. I originally thought that in the first episode that this was Tatooine. It looked like Tatooine. It was a kind of deserty uh, planet. Apparently, there is a entry on StarWars.com that mentions the Ugnaught that we see in the first episode, uh, who we also see in the second episode. Um, mentions that he has a vapor farm, moisture farm, on Arvala 7. Um, so that is pretty much confirming that this isn't Tatooine. I think as Star Wars fans uh, and viewers, we automatically assume that any desert planet 
is Tatooine. I know when I first saw the trailer for Force Awakens, that automatically assumed that Rey was on Tatooine, which wasn't the case at all. It was Jakku. Um, so that's just like another little thing, little gotcha. But we autom- I mean, like, there's so many tropes of Tatooine on this planet, so I'm not really sure why they decided to go this route. Uh, maybe like nostalgia callback or something like that. Um, but I mean, we see moisture farms. We it's a desert planet. We don't see the atmosphere, uh, so we can't confirm that there were two suns at any point. Either way, um, but yeah, so it's it's Arvala Seven, not Tatooine. But the Jawas are scavenging and taking apart his ship. They steal his ship parts. He's obviously super pissed because that's his ship. He, he you know he's got the, his his package in tow, like he's ready to get off the planet and, you know, get his money. Uh, he's trying to get that Beskar still back. So he takes a few pop shots at the Jawas, obliterating a few of them. They're freaking out. They're running around, and then they take off in the sand crawler. And we've never seen this before, but the sand crawler is actually super fast. It's not crawling. It's freaking speeding across the landscape. So he takes a shot at the one of the exhaust tubes or something, on the thing trying to disable it didn't work so he's running up and while he's running after the sand crawler he jumps on it and then we turn back to baby yoda speeding along i mean they have to be going like 50 60 miles per hour or faster i mean like it it, it was like a super insane speed so baby yoda's just like following along watching the whole thing um the mandalorian is scaling the sand crawler which was super cool to see. Like he's trying to get to the top of it to take over the sand crawler and get his ship back. Um, he's thrown out Jawas along the way. He finally makes it to the top, and the Jawas overpower him with the uh, shock blasters. Uh, he falls down on his back. Don't know how he's not dead and how his spine isn't crushed, but you know it's Star Wars. Maybe they have stronger exoskeletons. I don't know. So he's defeated, which is another thing. Going back to the cut on his arm. He's not the best. You know, He's it's shown him being super badass, scaling the sand crawler while it's moving. You know, he's killing the Jawas as he's doing it. But then everybody can be overpowered. And that's what they're showing once he got to the top. Like, he got knocked down. But he gets back up. He goes back and checks his ship. Obviously, it's not working. His parts are missing. Um, so he does some more uh, walking, trekking to the Ugnaught that we met in the first episode, which also has a name that I don't remember ever being mentioned, but somewhere along the way, people found out what his name is, which is uh, Kuhl, K-U-I-I-L. I I don't know how to say it. Um, Again, they haven't said it in the show as far as I know, so like I don't know how to properly pronounce it. But he goes back to this wise Ugnaught, and I just want to say I love that character. The Ugnaught character is super cool. He's like the Yoda of this TV show, I feel like like he's super wise. He's very helpful. He's very kind. He just he just wants to help the Mandalorian out. Like he's just like a mega fan of the mega Mandalorian. The Mandalorian goes to the Ugnaught, and you know he's kind of complaining. He's like, "Well, now I can't get off the planet. I'm stuck. You know, they took my ship. What am I gonna do? You know, just kind of kind of whining a little bit." Um, and the Ugnaught is like. You still have an option. You got to talk with the Jawas. You got to barter. You got to do something to get it back, like talk with them. Uh, So they head out. He shows them where the Jawas are. They kind of broker a deal. Uh, But while they're broken the deal, it's a very important scene because it shows the Mandalorian trying to communicate with the Jawas, and he doesn't know how to speak Jawa very well. And while you're watching it, you kind of think... Or you're not really thinking about that. You know, it's just kind of funny. They're, like, making fun of him. Like, you, your Jawa's really bad. You're not very good at speaking Jawa. And it's, like, a very quick scene. It's not, like, they don't focus on it a lot. But I think it's very important in the Star Wars universe is that this character is vulnerable and he doesn't know everything. Like, he doesn't know every single freaking language out there in the galaxy there's like thousands of species and languages out there and it seems like every other character in star wars that we've seen in the movies and other tv shows just automatically know these languages they can be kids and they're speaking wookie and whatever like ray and obi-wan i mean like they just they just know they just you know they just automatically know all the shit and 
that that that's cool sometimes like you know they don't have to you know learn that process but i'll go back to ray for instance like we're introduced to that character and she just automatically knows everything she's super powerful she's super op she's just like automatically good and i'm kind of sick of those characters like it's not fun like they just they're just automatically good you like you just know that they're gonna win um and i think they're like really subtly showing that the mandalorian is very vulnerable and is not an op character he's a badass nobody will question that he's good at what he does he gets bounties he can uh handle himself in a firefight um but at the end of the day he's just a guy like he's he's not a jedi he's he's a mandalorian they're warriors but they're still vulnerable uh so i thought that was super cool that they kind of focused on that a little bit um so they broker a deal and the deal is that he has to retrieve the egg um so he treks off into the wilderness of this planet and goes to a cave a uh, very dark cave uh you know something's in there that he's gonna have to fight it can't be that easy as just going into a cave and retrieving an egg. Um, but he goes in there and out comes a mud rhino looking creature. Um, it it kind of reminded me of the first battle in the Jangle Fett Bounty Hunter game on the GameCube. Uh, where he's fighting in the arena and it's, he's he's like fighting these like rhinoceros type things. Uh, I haven't played that and I didn't look it up but like that's what like came to mind when they did this it, it seemed like a callback to that game for some reason um but so he's fighting this creature because he has to fight the creature before he gets that egg and he brought baby yoda along obviously because the jawas were eyeing him they knew that that thing was valuable um so he brought it along anyway and he's just kind of watching he's off on the side just being cute just being a cute little baby the mandalorian is just fighting this creature and he's getting his ass kicked like he is gonna die uh everything that he's thrown at this creature he's using this flamethrower he you know he uh loses his rifle in the process but he's getting this his, the shit beat out of him by this rhino uh and in the process so like it looks like the mandalorian is done the rhino is charging at him he's about to ram him and kill him uh and then baby yoda uses the force and f's that rhino up brings him up uses his full force bar, depletes his force energy, and gives the Mandalorian time to stab the rhino in the neck and kills him um, and before passing out. Um, so that was super cool. So that just confirmed what we talked about in the first episode is that this creature is a force being. He has force abilities, and he knows how to use them. Like, he's fully aware. He's 50 years old. He's a 50-year-old baby. And he knows how to use his force powers. So, like, he may not be able to talk right now. He's still acting like a baby. He's cooing and gone, just being cute. I love Baby Yoda. But he's using his force powers, and, he, and he's, he's actually, like, an asset to this Mandalorian team. And uh, the Mandalorian's dumbstruck. Like, he's like, whoa, what just happened? Um, but he's able to go in the cave now that the rhino's dead, retrieves it, takes it back to the Jawas, and gets his ship parts back. It's also kind of disgusting once the Jawas get the egg. You think that they're going to like take the egg and sell it off or maybe raise that rhino somehow. I don't know. But they just cut it off and eat it like scrambled eggs, except it's just yolk. It's pretty nasty. Got to get that protein, I guess. But yeah, so it, it was a pretty cool scene. So he gets his ship or his ship parts back. The Ugnaught takes him back to his ship and uh, we go through a scene of the Ugnaught helping him out. Father-son bonding time. Um... And that's pretty much the episode. When the, the episode ends with him leaving the planet, and that is the end of chapter two. Uh, he does offer the Ugnaught to come along with him. You think that the Ugnaught may go with him and be a part of the team, but I think that's probably the end of uh, seeing uh, Mr. Cowboy Ugnaught, uh, unfortunately. I really liked him. He was pretty cool. Uh, but maybe not. Maybe we'll see more of him later on in the show. But we did see uh, the Mandalorian leave uh, without him. Um, so that is pretty much the synopsis of the show. The main things that I liked, again, going back to the vulnerability of the Mandalorian, I think that is super vital and important to this show that we keep seeing that this character is not an OP character. Like, I just can't express that enough. 
my feelings anyway. Some people may not like it. But I want to know that this character can be in danger. I want to know that this character is like a real person. Uh, and I think they're doing a really good job of showing that in this show so far. The other thing I like, Baby Yoda. Just like everyone else in the world that has seen this show, he has taken the internet by storm. He's inspired thousands of memes. I just want a plushie of him. I want a plushie of him that I can just go to sleep with. He's just so cute. He, such a little rascal. Using the Force, being all Yoda-ish. Uh, but yeah, so that was it. So I thought it was a good episode. It was 30 minutes. It was a lot shorter. It was half the time that the first episode was. But I think that is because the first and second episode were kind of like the same episode. They could have been like an hour and a half episode if they needed to. So we're introduced to the Mandalorian in the first episode. He gets his bounty, he goes to this planet, he retrieves the asset, and then the second episode is about him getting off the planet. And they don't show anything more other than him leaving the planet. So it's left up to the viewer to think, well, is he going to follow through and turn in this creature that he retrieved? Even though like he sees that like, you know, it's a it's a sweet little baby, you know? Uh, you know, he did save it from the droid from being killed, so he didn't want to kill it. But we don't know if he's actually going to turn it back into the Empire or if he's going to go and run off with it. Maybe uh, link up with his Mandalorian tribe or go to some other planet or just, you know, take care of it. And, like, they'll be pals and taking over the galaxy, you know? Like, that that would be sick. Like, I hope we get to see more of Baby Yoda. Second episode, third episode's coming out in a few days. I'll be sure to make another discussion video. I want to hear what you guys think. Uh, and I like talking about it. Um, but yeah, I think the series is good so far. I think it's great. I can't wait to see more. Um, so that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in episode three.